What's up and welcome to another edition of the Cover 2 Recap. I'm BruinSportsBoard.com publisher Edward Lewis. As always, this is the UCLA beat writer for the OC Register, Ryan Karchi. We're here today at UCLA where it just, just wrapped up its sixth practice of spring ball. Ryan, the news and notes again were a little bit lighter today. Uh, Isako Savayanea missed practice again with his shoulder injury, but it's not expected to be serious. Uh, outside linebacker Ian Tobler also missed practice, but again, not expected to be serious. Devin Fuller sat out a little bit. We still don't know why Jim Moore wasn't made available, but it again doesn't look to be serious. The one news of, or note of the day was Johnny Johnson looked to have re injured his surgically repaired shoulder. Um, again, don't know how serious it is, but those are kind of the news and notes. Otherwise, uh, I thought the running backs had a good day today. Ryan, what was your thoughts on them? You know, I, I think we've talked a lot about Craig Lee. He's definitely been one of the standouts. He looks like a different running back than he did, you know, last season. He looked a lot, a lot more lost than uh, you can see him kind of finding holes a little bit quicker. He's a lot more aggressive. You can see that the confidence is there. Still, we haven't got a chance to really evaluate him on pass blocking. But, you know, it's something that Kennedy Palomalu, you know, you just watch his drills. You see them working on it quite a bit. So I imagine there's going to be some kind of step forward. But today, I thought, you know, of the guys who we haven't really talked about that much this spring, Stephen Manfro had a great day. I mean, I, I think at times, especially with Craig Lee breaking out, you're going to see, you know, it's, it's going to be a little tougher to get Manfro carries, you know, especially if you plan on giving Jordan James, Paul Perkins, you know, the regular carries they've gotten recently. Uh, but, you know, Manfro is not going away. He's not giving them any reason not to play him. So, yeah, I think he had two long touchdown runs today. Uh, lots of long touchdown runs. Jordan James had one. Um, Craig Lee had a few great runs like he has, you know, pretty much every practice that we've seen. So, you know, it, it's definitely a positive step forward for a position that, you know, Jim Morris said himself is one of the biggest question marks this spring. Noel Mazzoni seemed most excited about those backs when we asked him about kind of who's popping out to you after practice. Some other guys he thought uh, played really well today and this whole spring were Mossy Johnson and Thomas Dorte. I know that was your top performer. Give me some of your top performers from the day, including Dorte. Well, I'll talk about Dorte first. You know, it's just become, you know, uh, it's just become obvious over the past few weeks that he's this guy has the best ball skills of any player on the team and you know it's not easy to say about that about a guy who you know had limited work last year but it was clear by the end of last year he was the best fly on the roster and he might just be the best receiver on the roster this year him and brett really have a rapport and i know uh you know coach mazzoni was talking about that that there's really you can tell they have a connection now and that's something that maybe they didn't necessarily have last year and when you have a guy like Duarte where you can kind of fit it into small windows and you know he's going to come out and get it you know that's got to be good for any quarterback's confidence I mean multiple times today I saw him take a ball that was probably not thrown in the right spot and pull it down immediately to the point where you can you can't even tell it wasn't that great of a pass you know that's a quarterback's best friend and I think he is really establishing himself as probably the breakout player of this entire season in my opinion the other guy that I you know that I was really impressed with another guy who I think is going to be one of the breakout players on this team Tahan Goodman I just keep being impressed by him you know he he looks quicker he looks you can tell his confidence is a lot different um you know Demetrius Martin even talked about you know moving him around a little bit. It, it seems like he's pretty confident that Tahan is one of the five guys he's very confident in starting. And I honestly, I know you brought this up. I'll give you credit. Uh, Ed brought this up, you know, a few practices ago. Honestly, I don't see him not starting. You know, he's been that good at their free safety spot. I think he's earned it. He was also the only guy to shut down Thomas Duarte that I've ever seen, you know, in the six practices. Uh, my two guys, I thought Najee Torin flashed some special ability today. I, I know we've been kind of harping on how good he is, and but it, it was kind of more of the, oh, he's good for an in, 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 early enrollee. He's good for a freshman. Well, today it was like, man, he's just good, period. <laughs> like he, through six practices this spring, compared to, you know, the first six practices of Alex Redmond's first, I guess, August, or technically, you know, his first practices as a Bruin, they're right on the same level, which to me, you know, Redmond was a a freshman All-American, which tells me Najee has that kind of skill set. Now, whether he'll play or not, I don't know. With Bunch ahead of him, with Redmond ahead of him, with Quisenberry ahead of him, you know, with the depth on the depth chart ahead of him, you don't know. But, man, he is flashing some serious talent out here. Uh, the other guy I thought was really good was Kenny Walker. Uh, Kenny Walker, the receiver that, that got back from back injury and the surgery and all that stuff. He's a guy that flashed two years ago in San Bernardino, then had the back surgery, and then just completely fell off. His hands were terrible. He wasn't really moving well. They, they bounced him from inside to outside and all this, but he seems like he's finally starting to come 
around again. Uh, today he had a couple nice big gains on a Darius Pickett and played really well. I think he can be kind of, if he keeps progressing, he can be that speed guy that this offense is missing. On the flip side, we always have guys that weren't necessarily up to that top performer list. Give me a guy you thought uh, needed to play a little bit better today or this week. You know, I, I say this guy only because of – how m many compliments were kind of thrown his way at the start of camp. But I think Pawasi Moala has kind of hit a bit of a wall. You know, he, he looked like a very clear cut, you know, right tackle. Even, I even think he's would be a good left tackle. I think that's what his body kind of calls for. But, you know, in these last few days, he's just kind of, you know, they've switched him out more for Kenny Lacey, who's had his moments as well. Although he had a, a few struggles late in practice today. Um, but pawasi has got that athleticism, and I think it's just kind of becoming clear that he's going to need to add some more strength to really kind of be that dominant run blocker they're going to try to they're going to need at right tackle. Um, obviously, a, a ton of upside, and I think you know he's going to end up being a great right tackle. He could very well supplant Simon Goins at that spot when it comes in the fall. But these last few practices, I haven't necessarily seen that same sort of potential. Or, or that same sort of performance that I saw in the first few. So I, I expect we'll see kind of a bounce back here soon, but he's definitely hit a wall. The, the one guy I just keep harping on is Zach Whitley, man. I mean, ever since they moved him to outside linebacker, he's basically disappeared. Um, I, I really, at inside linebacker, it was something special to watch. It was something just, okay, this is the beginning of something serious. And then he's moved to outside linebacker. They actually pass rushed him in one-on-one -on -one drills today. And there's just, the knack for pass rushing isn't there. The sideline to sideline ability kind of disappears when he plays outside. Uh, that's just one guy I'm going to be keep harping on until they move back to inside. That'll wrap up our coverage today from UCLA Spring Ball. As always, you can follow Ryan's coverage at Ryan underscore Karchi on Twitter and at OCRegister.com. You can follow me on Twitter at EdwardLewisBSR and at BruinSportsPort.com. Until the next time, cover two recap.